Hey, cowboy. Any memories coming back yet? Not so far, but something tells me I might be missing out on some really good ones. That's solid detective work. So... Were we... dating? Dating? Oh, that's so cute. I guess you can call it that. But we were also working together in a more professional capacity. Well, now my detective skills are picking up a little sarcasm. Seriously, cowboy, you're good. I've learned a lot working with you the past couple weeks. Hmm? Let me get this straight. Uh, you and I were working on a case together? Did you mind telling me about that? Not at all. You wanted a list of tenants here at the Ritz as far back as I could go. Why would I do that? It was your dreams. They were vivid before, but they were getting out of control. It's almost like they were changing you into someone else. You talked about seeing things from the past, but you wouldn't give me details. You were incredibly stressed. It was like you actually believed this apartment was haunted. You even started looking into psychometry. Psycho what? Psychometry. It's the belief that an object can contain a person's energy or memories. So? Not only am I an amnesiac, but I'm a paranormal idiot. Great. Sounds crazy, I know. But then we found out about Donnelly. Who? J.T. Donnelly. It was the most bizarre thing. I'd heard you mention the name in your sleep. But then his name turned up when I checked out the previous tenants. So who is this guy? He's a private investigator, a real old school brute. He worked for some powerful, influential people, but then he disappeared around 1943. His last known address was here. San Francisco? No, here, at the Ritz in this exact apartment. Okay, that's a little bizarre. It gets bizarrier. You call me one night, raving like a lunatic, saying the walls were talking. I rushed over and found holes smashed in the wall, and you curled up on the floor in a ball. Well, I'm glad to hear I haven't changed that much. You wouldn't tell me what had happened, but after that, you wouldn't sleep here. That's when you got your new place and started to sleep there. Hold on. I have another place? Yes, you do. And it's even nicer than here. This is all crazy. I think I'm going to sleep here tonight just to see whether it affects me in the same way. Do you want some company? Listen, Taylor. Um... I'm beginning to see what the other me saw in you. But in my head, it's still 2043. I've got to tell you, there was somebody else. Chelsea, I know. I know how much she meant to you, Tex. Losing her was traumatic as hell for you. But she's gone. And there's nothing you can say or do or don't do that's going to bring her back. I sure do. I'm alive. And that's my heart. It's yours if you want it. And it comes with all the other bits. I'm sorry, Taylor, but I love Chelsea. And I never even got the chance to tell her. And if there's any chance that I can find her, I've got to do it. I hope you'd understand. I don't understand, Tex. Why can't you let this go? It's crazy. That room you have across the hall with all our stuff, it's like some sick Chelsea shrine. I'm sorry I shouldn't have said that. I'm gonna go. Six hours later, the rain was finally letting up. Last night felt like a blindside punch to the face. I didn't think having Taylor walking out of my office could be so painful. There's just something reassuring and comfortable about her, but I've got way too many questions, yearnings, and guilt not to find out what happened to Chelsea. Even if it kills me, I've got to know. There's something darker than the night I'm dealing with, and it hinges on what happened that evening seven years ago with her.
As Taylor leaves, she hands me the key to a room at the Ritz. She calls the Chelsea Shrine Room. Looks like Archie's back in town. I should check out his three carts to midnight shop and see if he knows anything. According to Taylor, this opens a room here at the Ritz that has some of Chelsea's belongings. Archie Ellis is my herbal tea-loving, source-for-all-things-alien, supernatural, conspiracy theorist. Or he's just plain crazy. He ran into some trouble with the NSA on my last case. Last I knew, he was hiding out in some tropical locale with a bevy of beauties. I'm surprised he's back in town. Okay? I, I heard you were having some kind of amnesia. Y you know, most alien abductees always have some sort of memory loss. <laughs> Are you still into that alien thing, Archie? I mean, isn't that just a little passe? The truth never goes out of style, my friend. Now, I heard something about an injection and a, and a head wound. <gasps> Yowza! You really back off, man, because I swear I will shoot the next person who tries to touch this, okay? Okay, I'm sorry. Ouch. Ooh. So, I guess you do need some catching up then. A few months ago, I moved back here from the islands and I opened up this place. And I was hoping that you and I could hang out together like old times, but you haven't been around much. I've also turned into a heartless jerk. Sounded like the same Murph to me making jokes and putting your cigarette out in my herbal tea before I'm done with it. So, have you heard anything about what I was working on before the aliens got me? Not yet, but you know I'm always ready to be robbing to your Batman. <laughs> uh, without the homoerotic undertones, of course. Sorry, Arch, but it's a package deal. If you're gonna be in this with me, you're gonna have to be in all the way. <laughs> you, you, you had me going there, Murph. <laughs> okay, Boy Wonder. I need you to enter two names into the Bat computer. Mason Bowers, Margaret Leonard. Well, I don't know about Mason Bowers, but Margaret Leonard? She's connected to one of the greatest mysteries of all time. I mean, you know who uh, Nikola Tesla was, right? Nikola! The cough drop? Nikola Tesla was a genius. Probably one of the greatest geniuses ever. I mean, it was Tesla, not Marconi, who was the true inventor of the radio. He invented a, a Tesla coil, the AC electricity, remote control. He even pioneered cryogenics. So are we almost to the part about Margaret Leonard? Right. <laughs> Well, Tesla died in 1943 when the FBI uh, just swooped in and confiscated all his papers and designs. Then in about 2012, all this stuff, the, the Tesla cash just disappeared. <laughs> and you want to know who the number one suspect was? Margaret Leonard. No, an FBI agent named Charles Johansson. Now, I know they could never prove that he did it, but then he quits the FBI and joins some Tesla fanatic group called the Tesla Legacy Society, a group dedicated to making the world better through technology. And that's where he meets... Margaret Leonard. Bingo! <laughs> they fall in love, they get married. I think they even had a kid together. So where's Margaret now? Uh, not a clue. Johansson uh, died a couple years later, cancer, I think. And after that, Margaret just dropped out of circulation. 
So all this happened, what, 30, 37 years ago, I mean. No one's found the Tesla cash since then? It's one of the great mysteries, the lost inventions of Nikola Tesla. What's the big deal with the Tesla inventions? I mean, there must be some reason they were never made. Oh, you ever hear of a little thing called Tunguska? <sighs> Have I ever. Picked up a bad case when I was down in Mexico. It's where I learned the phrase, Baños rapidos, andale muchachos, vamonos. Oh, oh, Murph, you're too funny. You know, in 1890s, Tesla conducted an experiment and created a resonance frequency. You know, like a big vibration, and it nearly took out a whole chunk of New York City. And then in the 1900s, he began to work on what he called a teleforce beam. The, the, the press called it, you know, a death ray, you know, cooler name. But a few years later in Russia, remote area called Tunguska, something caused an explosion a thousand times greater than the atomic bomb. A thousand times greater than the atomic bomb 40 years before we invented it? But that was the last anyone ever heard of the death ray. Tesla never got funding. Instead, they made him out to be some crackpot and he was broke for the rest of his life. Some people think the plans for it were part of the Tesla cash. Just think how much someone would pay to get their hands on that. And I'll never forget what you did tipping me off before that whack job NSA guy could get me. <laughs> Seems nice. You know me, Murph. Always up for an adventure. As long as I don't have to go anywhere. You like my shop? <laughs> kind of like my old one, the Cosmic Connection. But I had to change the name in case, you know, the, the NSA and all that. I eat at the brew and stew all the time. I actually wouldn't mind forgetting a few years of my own life, mostly my teenage years. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's the hollow babe at the Golden Gate. Yeah, Mojo is warm for her form, or lack thereof, as it were. <laughs> He's not very friendly, is he? My little buddy Mojo works over there. <laughs> we hang out a lot, but I can't stay there too long. Something makes my eyeballs burn. Gosh, you'd think a sidekick would be a little more helpful, huh? Don't know about that. Donnelly's kind of a mysterious character. He was a private detective Tesla may have hired not long before he died. There's a mention of it in one of Tesla's letters. You know, both aliens and ghosts can communicate through their dreams. It's a proven fact. I've been checking my sources, but no one's heard a thing about her in years. He died like 40 years ago and either left the Tesla cash with Margaret Leonard or somebody else, or he took it to the grave. The Tesla cash is right up there for me. Oh, and the death ray? Well, the name says it all, doesn't it? As I leave, Archie hands me an old photograph of Margaret Leonard. Maybe someone else on Chandler will recognize her from the picture. I wonder if anyone else on Chandler Avenue has seen Margaret Leonard. If you were looking for me earlier, I wasn't here. Well, it's not like you're gonna just sit around here waiting for me to ask questions, right? <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't be very realistic, would it? So what can I do for you? You recognize the woman in this photo? Oh, nice. I think I saw her in a playbook from 1996. Is this your girlfriend? Not yet, but I'd like to take her out for dinner and drinks and... Well, then we'd go from there. <laughs> I'm just kidding about this woman being your girlfriend. She's actually mine. No, I'm kidding again. This is Margaret Leonard. She's had a room here at the Ritz forever. 
She used to live here, but I haven't seen her in years. So, she may not be here anymore, but she auto-pays her rent. So it's all good. Any chance you can get me into her apartment? <laughs> not a chance in hell. I let her install her own security system, just like you, except hers is a real one. I can't tell you which apartment it is, but you won't get in without a passcode or a personal invitation. Maybe I can try to help you with something else. I haven't tried it. They say that the sauce will melt your eyeballs, and that's a risk I'm just not willing to take. I know for a fact I've never seen this fox before, because if I had, she'd be my lady love. Can't help you with that. All I know about her is she's got a room here. I hardly ever see her, so I don't know when she's here and when she isn't. I'll bet she was something back in the day. Way back in the day. I've been thinking, Murphy, uh, perhaps I should confide something to you. Oh, this should be good. Well, it, you believe the Maldonado is spying on you, but it could have been someone else. Uh, not Margaret Leonard by any chance. How did you know? Do the words P.I. mean anything to you? Margaret may be in grave danger. I, I've tried to contact her, but to no avail. Gosh, if only we knew someone with some detective skills. Do you know how to get into her apartment? No, but she may have left a clue. Some time ago, she left this in my care. It's, it's for you. For me? She wanted you to have it in case anything happened. I met Margaret years ago. She was a woman of secrets. I have an interest in Tesla collectibles, so yes. I've heard of it, and no, I don't know where you could find it. I met Margaret years ago. She was a woman of secrets. Why would Margaret Leonard leave me a key? Needs a key. I'm here to ask you out for dinner, and I'm not taking no for an answer. What, like a date? No, it'd be more like two friends having a great meal and maybe some stimulating conversation. I guess that'd be okay. I mean, yeah, that'd, that'd be all right. So what are you in the mood for? You know, I heard Weenie World put tater tots on the menu. I've got a better idea. Why don't you let me make you dinner at my place? It's cheaper than going out. And uh, besides, I have uh, something I'd like to talk to you about. Let's say, uh, 8 o'clock? Well, you talked me into it, Miss Pantel. Well, I feel so spoiled. By the way... What should I bring, red or white? You better bring both. Uh, 
I know Chelsea and I will always have Weenie World tater tots. It's a picture of Chelsea. Man, Chelsea always looked great in the hats. It's a picture of me and my would-be girlfriend Chelsea Bando. I got a gut feeling she's out there. It's funny how fashion cycles circle around. These are all Chelsea's belongings. When the police closed her case, I must have picked up these items from her apartment. A reminder of the best and worst night of my life. Yeah, I remember how much Chelsea wanted to go to the Fuchsia Flamingo that night. It's Chelsea's business card for her newsstand. I didn't have the heart to tell her that print is dead. Chelsea loved to go to Arizona. I'd like to think I was the only thing keeping her here on Chandler Avenue. Oh, that's gotta be a fire hazard. I remember this thing was $14.99. Man, I spent an entire three months' salary on a ring for Chelsea. That chair looks comfortable. Too comfortable. Uh-oh. That doesn't look good. As I walk in the bathroom, I realize there's something wrong here. Something terribly wrong. <laughs> 